do. Uh, I support you. Uh, I did down there, and I have since I've returned, and I just didn't want to do any questions about it. Uh, I've never talked to uh, anybody in a press conference about this meeting except our local paper here. Yeah. So how some uh, national paper could come out with that is almost beyond belief. Well, you saw the Times this morning. I haven't seen the Times. Well, they had a big story yesterday, and they got a big one this morning, and they have canvassed the whole country, and a majority of them, uh, almost, well, there's 17 percent are against me. Well, that's a relatively small percent I say that was a for, uh, for an incumbent, 17 percent. But uh, uh, I think that you could start off just uh, unanimously with 11 states on account of civil rights. And that would include Texas, uh, because Texas is not for civil rights, and Connolly is not for the Democratic platform. He made speeches against Medicaid. He made speeches against Medicare. He went on television to oppose them all. He made speeches against uh, uh, the uh, uh, civil rights. He made speeches against housing and made it an issue. And the Republicans in this state support him 100%. And uh, uh, so, We've got 11 states, so I'm surprised that 17 percent is a very small number. But they conclude that 26 percent refuse to commit themselves. So 17 and 26 make it very doubtful. Uh, that's their conclusion. That's the lead. And uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy started it with King up in New Hampshire and with Hughes out in Iowa. Teddy's roommate uh, uh, is... Uh, gone out there and set up a statewide organization, and he's a member of Congress. Now, we know what they're doing. We see it. But these other dumb people that were down, a good many of them down here, never did know what the pitch was. Uh, King and uh, Hughes and uh, uh, one or two others uh, uh, at uh, uh, Hearns uh, out in Missouri, uh, one of the boys with the National Committee went out there and set up a public relations firm that's financed by the Kennedys and located in uh, Kansas City. And he's making his headquarters there for operations in other states, kind of like the, they did up in uh, New Hampshire in 1964 when the vice presidential pitch is on. So that's what it is, Phil, and uh, we might as well recognize it for what it is. And I don't care if they won't destroy the Democrats, won't destroy the party. And, uh, so on and so forth. I can't help it. I'm just going to carry out the platform and continue to do what I can and let everybody jump on me and kick me around. I've done nothing to deserve it. I've got a good record, and uh, I'm rather proud of it, but uh, uh, the Times uh, is run by a bunch of commies, and they want to get out of Vietnam and yield it to them, and I don't think I can quite do that. Well, uh, I sure don't want to. They, yielded us to, they want us to yield Cuba, so they take the my own people, Mansfield, Fulbright, Aiken, folks of that kind, they give me hell on it every day, and they get their picture in the paper. So it's just a question of trying to do what you think's right, and that's what I'm going to do, and I appreciate your friendship. And uh, I'm rather, rather sorry that you came, uh, because I don't think you've got any business in, in a crowd like that. Uh, it's like the old dog tray. You get in with a bunch of bad dogs, and cues. Uh, Hughes does. He voted against the resolution Civil Rights Conference. He's against those things. He's a goddamn Republican running in Iowa. And uh, uh, I've got letters from the Iowa chairman just raising hell about his committee never having met. They talk about the Democratic committee. Now, I couldn't tell him, but I went into his state and I left him $100,000 in cash right in that damn little jerk state. And in addition to that, we contributed over 10 to each one of his congressmen. And in addition to that, we went all over his state speaking. And uh, the reason he got elected is because he's, he touches the Democrats, and he's part of the Republicans, and he runs on the Democratic ticket. And uh, it's, it's a Republican state, and I can't do anything about Hughes, and I can't do anything about South Carolina, and I can't do anything about Virginia. And I can't do anything about Florida, and I can't do anything about uh, Missouri. Uh, this Hearns has been against us ever since he came in. He wanted to dictate the poverty man so he could run a patronage thing. And I can't, uh, I can't go uh, against uh, Ed Long and Stuart Symington, who are in the Senate, who would kill my poverty bill. I just passed it before vote. But uh, 
they have blown up much about nothing the way I see it. And I think that uh, in due time, I'll have to just indict the whole damned outfit on my side of it. I don't think that'll help, but I think that, uh, that the way they're going, I will have to explain my position. So we'll be in a tug of war between a bunch of uh, southern governors and then uh, the rest of them will join it, and uh, I guess uh, I guess uh, we'll just turn it over to uh, you, Romney. Well, just, I was asked to explain, allow me to do this. I know that Terry would be more than happy if I could bring together a group of governors to come down who are in your corner. I don't think we ought to see them. I think the more contact I have with the governors, you know, I've had more than any, all presidents put together. And it doesn't do anything but harm. They come out and they're afraid some Republican in their state's going to criticize them, so they criticize me. And they use my springboard as a launching power. You saw that damn deceitful Hearn. I asked any of them to get up and say anything they wanted to, and he didn't have guts enough to do it, and he called a press conference after he walked out of the hangar. Didn't you see that? No, I didn't. Well, that's what he did. And he took the whole story down here. And the story was that, by God, they were pursuing what they said at White Sulphur and that he wanted to know that Johnson was in deep trouble. And the whole story from the ranch was just what he had said at White Sulphur, because when I asked each governor to get up, I wanted to be fair. I wanted each man to say what he wanted to, but he wouldn't do it. And then when he got out and all of us started to plane, and I was the host, and I felt like I ought to put Conley on his plane, I ought to put the others, and he came in a separate plane of the Northwest Life Insurance Company. And uh, uh, while I was putting him on, he called himself a press conference, and he spoke for the whole group then by saying all of them were unhappy and that they said just what they said at White Sulphur and that this was a mess. So I just think that I'll see any governor anytime, anywhere, about anything. But I think it's going to promote a debate and uh, so on and so forth. And I'm working on my budget, and I'm working on my... Uh, uh, State of the Union, and I'm grinding away day and night, and I've got the Vietnam thing is going bad. Uh, uh, we've got the negotiations going, but everybody is jumping in and saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. New York Times has got a man over there, and uh, I'd rather have a Soviet agent. And uh, so I think that the as far as I'm concerned, there's not anything I want from the party. I just want to do the best job I can that I'm going to do, and uh, I'll do it with or without the governors. I don't want any of them to support me. I don't care. I just think that they hurt their party and hurt themselves with these fool talks. And well, you know, it's curious, because I, I said nothing about this except in my own local paper, and I think what I'll do is cut it out and send it down. Well, I know, I know your attitude. It's been a good, fine, and heartwarming one, but... Uh, uh, folks get over a bottle, you know, they can do a lot of things, and uh, I think the damage was done when you let Hughes come out there and say that after Romney met with his governors, and they were all unanimous, and they hadn't done a goddamn thing. My governors met, and we had the finest program in history, and done more to help their states than ever before, and put more money into their states, and got more people jobs. Instead of coming out and saying that, they came out and said their president's no goddamn good. Yeah, that was a... So you can imagine how your president feels about that kind of meeting and everybody that that uh, contributed to it. Well, I just want you to know that I thoroughly support you. I just don't know if the president has a better record. Uh, doesn't mean we agree on all things. Well, but my gosh, you don't uh, wash your linen in public, even if uh, you do have one or two minor points. It would be unusual if we all agree on I don't know what it is I've done that's wrong, according to any of them. Uh, South... So, so, uh, is against civil rights. But I even think they think I've got to do it. But that's the only thing I know of. I don't know anything else I've done that's wrong. I don't either. I wouldn't retrace the damn step of it. No plan to. And uh, uh, you know the high regard I have for you and your wife and your family, all of you, and your state. But uh, I was pretty, uh, I thought I was pretty disgracefully treated. You were? Uh, unbelievably. And, uh, and in honesty, I don't think Hughes meant to go as far as... I think he's just a plain damn traitor. That's what I think about Hughes. Well... That shit ass came to my bedroom when I was sick. Spent over an hour 
And he did nothing but praise me and cuss the people of Iowa for dumbbells and said I ought to give Iowa one dime. And he left that night and went down there and presided over that meeting. And he didn't tell them he'd been in my room an hour at least. He didn't tell the press that. He made out like there'd been no communication. My whole damn week was ruined. I had to give it up to a bunch of uh, uh, nincompoop politicians. I, I, I spent, I, I had seven different meetings with governors that week. The ones that didn't have any communication. Yeah, well, this goddamn that old colonel came in there and stayed over an hour during my lunch hour. I gave him my lunch. I didn't even go to lunch that day. Plus a $400 million atomic energy reactor. And then he went down there and he said that he differed on this and he differed on that. Well, by God, I differ with him on a good many things. And I just don't understand people that way. Well, the seven of them came by. Conley came and uh, and not only came and spent the afternoon, spent the night, spent all the next day. Then he came down and had lunch with Frank Morrison and spent two hours with me. And I just don't understand. I think all of them want to get a little national publicity and they can sell out to the Republicans. And I, I imagine if you go down to the... Uh, uh, Montpelier, whatever your paper's name, you can go down there and denounce your wife and get a page, get a front page spread by saying that she's run off with somebody. And that's what I consider they did to me. I think you sold themselves for a little, little ABC stuff. You didn't. I saw what you said and it was, it was generous. But I don't want you to, I know I'm unpopular. I know that I don't think it's unpopular as they say. And I think Bobby Kennedy had a couple of polls made, but I think that I've got a better poll than any other Democrat, and I'm still above 50 percent, so uh, when you carry on all the stuff I have, but I know it's uh, all, the, all the buzzards, they sit around, they smell something a little bit dead, they like to fly down and take a piece out of it, and that's what's happening. But good Lord will take care of you, and in due time, uh, we'll be back on top, so I wouldn't worry, and I just tell Terry, if, if he's loyal to the Democratic Party, just keep his mouth shut. If he's not, denounce us and give us all the hell he wants to. All right, I'll call him and tell him that. I just want to know again. I'm probably behind you. I'm not <clears throat> running away. I'm not backing away. I'm not backing away in this. And uh, I'm with you. I'm in your corner. I want you to know that. And I'm going to pull together some of these other fellows. And, uh, I think the first thing you ought to do, probably, without coming to me, you ought to tell Connolly what they're writing up there and tell him if they, he really doesn't know what he and the Southerners are doing. Boy, it's apparently just murder. All right, Mr. President, let me see what I can do along some of these lines. Uh, I just want to wish you the very best.